For a while now, I've been using this MacBook as my main development machine, and over time, I found a bunch of tweaks, tools, and optimizations that make coding on macOS way smoother. A bunch of things you don't even know you need until you get them, whether it's getting more screen space, speeding up my workflow, or just making everything feel snappier, these small changes add up to a big difference. So in this video, I'll share the best ways to improve your coding experience on a MacBook. Let's dive in. The first important thing when using a laptop, especially as a software engineer, is the screen real estate. Mac OS in general has a very nice and efficient way of dealing with this. Multiple desktops that you can switch in between very fast with a swipe. This way, even a 14 inch machine like mine can be spacious enough to do all your work. It feels like you got multiple displays honestly. If you only use the Windows laptop, it is pretty hard to imagine, but I can tell you this layout is very different and well thought out. What I found though is that turning the hiding of your dock on and then just using Spotlight to open up any app you might need frees up a lot of additional space. It took me a while to get used to this since I got used to seeing the dock, but now it comes very natural. If you are using the terminal a lot, which as a developer on a Mac there are huge chances you do, there are better options than the one that comes pre-installed. I did not think I need anything fancier at first, since I'm a minimalist, but there are just so many features that you did not even think about and they will make your life so much easier. I am currently using iTurn 2 and just to give you a few examples of what I am talking about, it has got search within files, auto completion with a drop down from which you can select the correct option, paste history, multiple profiles, a password manager, colorful themes and many more. Just by using Using the terminal, a free IDE and this MacBook, I was able to make over $5,000 in the last 30 days with one of my side hustles. Here is my revenue dashboard. The idea is pretty simple. You just have to build an API that solves a specific problem or provides a certain type of data and this way you can earn recurring revenue as companies and developers gradually integrate it into their own projects. Now obviously there's a right way and the wrong way to go about this, you need to pick a good niche that's on the come up, structure the endpoints of your API correctly and know how to price it in a way that maximizes revenue but is still a good deal for companies. It's not just about writing code, it's about understanding how to position it so that people actually want to pay for it. That's exactly why I put together a full course on this, where I break down everything from picking the perfect API idea to setting it up and getting your first paying user. It covers everything from the start, including what exactly is an API so don't worry if you are a beginner. It also has a lot of free lessons in it to see if it's a good fit for you. So if you're interested I'll leave the link to it first thing in the description down below. Now that you've got yourself a better terminal, you can further customize it with plugins and themes by getting Oh My ZSH. Your choices might depend a lot on what is your coding stack, but some general ones I found to be awesome are ZSH auto suggestions that auto suggest commands as you type, Z that lets you jump between frequent directories instantly without typing long CD commands, and macOS containing shortcuts for macOS system actions. Things like showing hidden files in Finder and so on. As far as themes go, I use the Agnoster one, but they really have a ton of options and it is very subjective based on taste. The best package manager that I know of on Mac is Homebrew. It simplifies installing, updating and managing software from the command line. From my experience, installing stuff this way directly from the terminal can be much more time effective than from the browser or any other way. You sacrifice a bit on the user interface friendliness but you'll get used to it over time. To install Brew, you just have to run a few quick commands in the terminal, no big deal. Instead of Spotlight, you can install a similar tool like Raycast. I found it is so much faster when searching through files while also having additional capabilities, custom workflows, integrations, automations and lately an AI-powered chat like ChatGPT right in the launcher. When it comes to the IDE, you may again already have a favorite based on your tech stack, Visual Studio 
code is the most versatile one, but an option I've tried recently and amazed me is Cursor. The key difference is its significantly improved and larger context awareness. This makes it far superior to the standard Copilot integration from within a typical editor. Basically, if Copilot from VS Code only knows about the file you make it modify, Cursor knows about the entire application and can make changes impacting more files at once. Also, you can quickly add as context different files from your project when you talk with it. I recently coded an entire MVP for my startup idea using this tool in just a few hours. Here is the video about it if you're curious. A few other suggestions regarding the entire Mac operating system would be to use a window management tool like Rectangle, since here there is no default option of automatically snapping windows, enabling the tap to click and the three finger drag from system settings and using a clipboard manager tool like Macy to store multiple copied items. But yeah, this was about it for this week. Thanks for tuning in. Let me know in the comments below what are your ways of optimizing your workflow within macOS as well as ask any additional questions you might have. Until next time, thanks for watching and happy coding!